Hey guys, it's David from Live Forever or Die Trying, and today I've got somewhat of a namesake video for you today. It's a type of video that I've been meaning to do since I believe my newbie tag, uh, was that six months ago now? Um, and it's basically where I read a selection of books on a given topic and then report back to you guys and let you know what I thought and a kind of starter pack onto an intro to a particular subject. Now, this particular subject is one that's pretty close to my heart, and that's longevity, as you can tell from the name of the channel. And kind of why I'm excited to show you these selections of books is to kind of tell you how close we are um, to this maybe being a thing. Um, so let's take one step back, let's define longevity. So when we say like longevity in the context of the sciences and the books that I'm gonna be showing you, it's not a quest for immortality necessarily. It's mainly a quest to keep upkeep on the body and you know, fix repairs over time. At the end of the day, you'll still be a mortal person and if a bus hits you, you will still die. Um, so longevity basically is treating aging like a disease, you know, Similar to like how a classic car from the 50s can be upkeeped and have parts replaced on it over time and it can go way longer than the original car's lifespan, there's no reason a biological machine wouldn't be able to do the same thing provided we have the similar understanding with our own mechanics as we do those classic cars. So, to start, the first book I would recommend is Ending Aging by Aubrey de Grey. Now, Aubrey de Grey is a biogerontologist, which basically means he studies aging in biological um, organisms. Um, and the reason I recommend his book is he's kind of like the cheerleader of the longevity world. And if you're reading any of the science or any watching any interviews on the topic, like there's a 50-50 chance this guy's going to be in it. Now, this particular book of his was written back in 2007, and starts off by saying his kind of brainstorm idea at a conference he's at and how he came up with this idea. Warning at this point, there's a little bit of ego in the book, so if that throws you off, that's something to watch out for. But there's a little bit of a good reason for it. Um, he talks about how he formed the idea of sins or strategies for engineered negligible senescence. And basically, that's the mechanisms that lead to aging and how they can be prevented. Um, so this book lays out his seven different areas that consist of sins or the different strategies that lead to repairing the damage caused by aging. For curiosity's sake, if you want the Reader's Digest version, the seven areas are mitochondrial DNA failures, cell loss and atrophy, cancer, death avoiding cells and senescence, intercellular junk such as lysosome overloads, extracellular junk such as glyciated proteins, and then cross-linking of proteins which is like tau uh, proteins and Alzheimer's disease. Now, I will say as a warning, this book can get a little wordy and hard to understand if you're not a scientist. I personally struggled with it a little bit and I've read a decent amount of scientific text even though I didn't go to college. So if that gives you any kind of benchmark, it wasn't the easiest to understand. What I find most valuable about this book is the moral argument it lays out, however. Um, so what he really tries to drill home and in the beginning of the book, so you don't have to read through the whole thing and all the science if you don't want to, but it's the moral argument that if aging is truly a treatable disease, there is no moral reason that it shouldn't be at the forefront of our focus right now. And that's basically saying if you round up the diseases that are caused by aging, such as cancer and dementia and different diseases like that, that are kind of downstream effects from the base causes of aging, then aging kills more people than literally anything else. Um, so I think that moral argument is really valuable in this book. For the second book that I'd highly recommend is going to be Lifespan by David Sinclair, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To. Now, David Sinclair, pretty popular guy in the longevity scene as well. He is a uh, PhD uh, biologist, and I believe he teaches genetics at Harvard at the moment. 
Now, why I would recommend this book is this lays out his information theory of aging. It doesn't necessarily conflict with Aubrey de Grey, but this is kind of like a more root cause. Whereas Aubrey de Grey argues that there's seven main causes of aging. Um, in this book, um, published 2019, David Sinclair talks about what might cause those other seven issues. And in particular, this is called his um, information theory of aging. And in a super short um, description, it's basically damages to the epigenome, which reads the DNA and constructs the proteins for cells to action and do what cells are supposed to do, um, that wears down over time. He uses the analogy similar to like a CD-ROM. The CD itself still has all the data on it, but as it gets scratches, the laser can't read it. Similarly, the DNA we know can stay over time. Similar to how if a 30-year-old couple gives birth to a baby from two 30-year-old bodies, the baby still comes out as a newborn with fresh DNA and no DNA damage. We know that biological organisms have some way to reset the damage done or else babies, for example, would come out much older or at least have older cells in them. Now, what David's proposing in this is that root cause is the epigenome. And if we could find a way to reset that epigenome, then we'd be able to restore the DNA function um, to its pristine state and it'd be able to function correctly. So this would explain why some things like the inter intracellular and extracellular junk would um, accumulate. And if we could fix the DNA, we could stop some of the seven aspects of sins. I will say the, uh, the theory in this book is fully expressed within the first seven pa 70 pages. And thereafter, um, in the center of the book kind of talks about science that David Sinclair is working on. Really interesting stuff involving Yamanaka factors of genes and basically how you can program them and other neat stuff. Um, that's all interesting, but it's not necessarily the reason I'd recommend this book. But the remainder of the book um, is good. It's fun to read. And then for the third book um, that I'd recommend on this topic is going to be Juvenescence, Investing in the Age of Longevity by Jim Mellon and L. Chalabi. Might have butchered that second name. But these two guys are pretty successful investors. And now, why would I necessarily recommend this book? What this book does really well um, is it goes into 26 different areas that we're currently actually working on in laboratories. So everything from like mTOR and um, other like up and down regulations within cells and pathways, or whether that's like genetic engineering and technologies we're using to edit genomes to fix problems. So it's written from the perspective of an investor trying to teach you what company is going to be profitable. And in order to do that, they need to tell you how likely the technology is to actually work in order to you to have a good investment. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautifully produced book with tons of different infographics. It's easy to read. It's in layman's terms. Like I, I can't really tell you how much this book surprised me after looking at the cover and thinking it's about investing. Um, but yeah super solid read and honestly this isn't a bad one to start with it's interesting and it talks about so many different areas that you can pick it up and put it down like on a dime um whereas the other two books are a little bit more theoretical so it's not necessarily bad to start with this one but yeah and then we talk about a few different books about like where aging's at, you know, is it possible to actually do what we're trying to do here? Um, and as kind of like two little throw in books, if, if this kind of gets you motivated to look further into this field or to um, try to improve your health right now, I would also recommend How Not to Die by Michael Greger. And I talked about this pretty in depth in a different video, but basically it looks at the 15 um, most likely causes of death and how to avoid them. 
uh, mainly from a diet approach, plant-based diets in particular, and stays away from moral arguments about plant-based diets, and mainly sticks to um, a lot of well-cited studies that actually show you the effects of eating certain food. So I love that it doesn't come from a moral high ground, not that I'm against the moral argument. But yeah, super solid book, quite a read, and it really puts some cognitive, dis cognitive dissonance onto you. So whenever you look at like a plate of red meat, you kind of reel back a little bit. Not in a disgust way, but in a I know I could be eating better type of way. Finally, as another throw in, um, a big aspect of health and longevity is going to be protecting your mind. And um, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker is going to be a really good book to read about a cornerstone of health. And that's basically going to drill in different studies that show you how even negligible losses of sleep, such as six hours, can impact your immune system, your memory, your motor skills, absolutely everything. So yeah, two quick little throw-ins for you uh, just to round out that reading list. Let me know how you like this type of video. Um, I liked making it. This one didn't have a script, as you could probably tell, a little bit off the cuff. But I'm really enjoying enjoying reading by topic and trying to get a well-rounded view on certain issues. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you want to see more of this, I would love for you to leave a like or a comment telling me. I'm always looking for areas to improve in. And I'm uh, kind of blown away by the support so far, to be completely honest. Um, over 800 subscribers now. and. In my last video, I got a little bit personal about the coronavirus and how it's affecting me and everything and saw an uh, outpouring of support and concern for that. Um, and I couldn't thank you guys enough. That definitely means a lot to me. Um, as a little bit of an update on that situation, I want to let everybody know that we're doing better both as a business um, as well as we're staying safe. Um, things are going on the right track. Our state's doing decent and we're reopening, which means more business. Obviously, there's still an air of concern to everything, but less things to worry about. So that's always good. But yeah, um, good talking to you guys today. See you around.